Well, more from the Chief Minister, and as I'm doing a sort of catch up, but I was back in time for the electricity hike. Uh, you had a minister in there, and then a few days later he was out of that job. You know, he, it was his last sort of parting thing. Still, people have, can't get their heads around this that gas prices are coming down, the electricity is now going up. You know, it's, it's, this is going to put a massive strain on the inflation rate as well, isn't it? What's your, you're behind all this, right? I mean, you, you've obviously been party to the, the process of what's going on. And why? Ex explain in your terms, please, what, what's going on. Well, we made the decision last August to freeze electricity prices, to direct the Manx Utilities Authority to, to freeze electricity prices. We knew then that the, the prices were scheduled to rise uh, sort of 60, 70 per cent. Um, but we felt at the time that, you know, with uh, the war going on in Ukraine, potentially we just didn't know what, what winter was going to look like. We were still coming out effectively of the COVID pandemic, that it was in the, in the island's overall economic interest to freeze the electricity price at, at, at that point. And we've enjoyed the benefits of that uh, since August um, last year. And, you know, I believe it was the right thing to do. I think it's helped us navigate a very, very tricky uh, winter period in terms of the cost of living. It's reduced uh, for very many people the, the actual cost of uh, energy supply. Um, but at some point, of course, we have to face reality. And the reality is that the compound effect of freezing electricity prices mean, means that, it, that they have to go up. And uh, again, unfortunately, um, you know, the government cannot carry on I think there comes a point where, where you have to decide that the government can, cannot carry on subsidising effectively but the uh, energy was, wasn't prices. It? it was being put off to... Well, of course, that... it's the taxpayers' money, no, no, but, but effectively, the, the, you know, the, the government's reserve funds or reserves yes. just couldn't carry on subsidising, yeah. and at some point we had to face um, the reality of the current energy price and, and, and hence the decision. And I know it's um, tough. Uh, you know, the only... Uh, mitigating factor, I suppose, as these prices are coming in through through the spring and, and summer, and I hope that'll at least give people a chance to try and uh, adjust, if possible, um, accepting, of course, that, that business, which is, can be a 12-hour-a-day you know, a or even 24-hour-a-day operation, um, will have less opportunity to do so. Yeah, but I'm thinking about the people, the, the, the pensioner who's on a fixed income, who it's heat or eat, isn't it? And you hear this all the time, and this is going to be a huge extra burden on people who haven't got any reserves, they're living very frugally anyway. How do you talk to those sort of people and, and explain what you're doing? And is there a safety net for them? Well, I think, uh, you know, the, the budget has just been de delivered. We've seen an inflationary increase in, in pensions, state pensions, for, for example, that other uh, supporting benefits have gone up as well. So arguably there has been some Mm. Uh, increase in terms of their financial income, uh, albeit it, it, it's it's hard, and you know it'll be hard for for a lot of families. I think, given the whole inflationary impact that that we've seen over the last twelve months, you know the costs, for example, of just the weekly shop in 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 the supermarket. I know it's very difficult for uh, many families on low to middle incomes, and of course this will add uh, an increased burden. Nevertheless, you know, we, we, we have to, you know, face up, I guess, to the, to, to the cost of living challenge. The government will continue to promote the economy. We'll continue to do our very best to make sure that everybody's got as many work opportunities as possible. We've raised, um, again, the, uh, the, the, the minimum wage as we push towards, towards the living wage. So we have taken action mm. to try and help ensure that people um, are getting money into their pockets or at least have, have that op opportunity to do so. Mm. So we're 50% there, right? What does that do to the Isle of Man's inflation rate? You must have known when you're making that. What is it in itself? How much is that going to nudge it in the wrong direction again? Well, I think our, our estimates are some, somewhere between one and a half to possibly 2% two, two probably in terms of the actual uh, the actual measure of uh, inflationary impact mm. on, but everything on the goes, island. Yeah, but sorry, but everything... Everybody else in that yeah. loop is going to go up as well because everyone who makes the, you know, the bakers so, and whatever, yeah, everyone's got to put their prices up as well because their, their fundamental prices of electricity have been hiked, right? So everyone's going to be hit. Well, I think, yeah, it does, of course it doesn't help uh, infl inflation, but uh, there's a number of factors that don't help um, inflation. Look, you know, we have to make a number of, of decisions based on the reality of, 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 finan of the financial fiscal position as well. And, you know, we made that decision to protect everybody 
during a very, very delicate, what we regarded as a very delicate period this winter. As it, as it actually happens, it's, um, I haven't seen the full statistics, but it, we all know that it's been probably warmer than, it's, mm. nor, than it has been um, and it's certainly been drier. Uh, the, the many winters that, that we've um, known. Nevertheless, I think it was the right decision um, to make. It has helped protect uh, people and the economy. We have made adjustments, particularly for pensioners, in the budget. And, you know, it's a, it's a challenge that we're all going to have to, um, you know, to, to face up to. But the important thing for the government is we continue to work on focusing on uh, the economy. We continue to focus on sure that everybody has... Uh, jobs uh, yeah. and income opportunities and yes it is partly our responsibility as well for those who are more vulnerable in fixed incomes for example that, that we make sure that we've got the right benefits available to support them sure. where, where appropriate. But most of this electricity is being made by gas isn't it? It's coming down in price. I mean it's not coming down. That yeah, well, I mean, and, and I think that's the slight dichotomy that, that a lot of people probably just Slightly struggling, but but as I said, it's a com compound effect. Mm. It's no secret. I think the chairman of the MUA has already said that the figures for for the Manchester Utilities Authority will show a fifty million pound loss, um, and you, you know that is because you know gas. A lot of our gas is forward forward purchased, mm. so we pay the price of, of forward purchasing. Clearly. Um, you know the gas. Uh, the, sorry, the Max Utilities Authority are trying to always work out the best time to make these forward purchases, but it's not a here and now um, purchase, well, and, and you have to fact, factor in effectively the compound sure. effect. Of Ten years ago, we could have been putting in the wind farms, but you know, that never happened. Yeah, it was still in your time, there wasn't it? Ten years ago, they, they were talking about it, weren't they? Now we're still sitting here with nothing of any size. I mean, there's the odd bit, but no, except, no wind farms. Except that we have made the commitment now for 20 megawatts of onshore yeah. electricity by 2026. Just finish this bit off, um, the, the Kroger business and mm. gas, um, where are we up to? You, you, you're letting them do it and are they getting on with it and are you happy with this? And there's going to be lots of money coming into the Treasury at some point from that? Well, Kroger have an agreement that would, will enable them to, to be able to, to, to drill for gas, providing they meet certain uh, elements or, or stages in terms of criteria along the way. Uh, and that, that license stands, and, and providing they meet the ter terms of that license, then you know one, one would expect that they will be drilling for gas. And money comes into your coffers, right? If it in, all goes in to theory, plan, that's, if it happens, that, that, that's if, if, of course, it happens. I mean, yeah. I think uh, you know there's a lot. You know, Kroger, I know, are very busy promoting um, the opportunity at the moment. I think they want to go straight uh, to, to to drill a test. Well, they'd like to do that sooner rather than later. Um, there are a number of complexities in terms of how that might be achieved. It's not quite the route map that was planned in terms of the awarding of the mm. of the uh, the agreement for them to be able to do so. But nevertheless, you know, I hope that that they can navigate that successfully and and get down there and, and drill the well. But they've got to do that within the terms of the agreement that's been set before them. The dash for gas, as they keep saying. So you think it's going to happen? Well, it's part of a transition, isn't it, Paul? You know, we're committed to renewable energy. We've already talked about, um, you know, the need to for the island to be engaged fully on the renewable energy programme. That's why we've uh, committed to this 20 megawatts of, of onshore electricity, at least by 2026. You know, and by 2030, we've set the target of... 75% uh, um, towards our towards our net zero target, and the fact that that the vast majority of our energy security will be um, secured by putting in a, se a second interconnector. And you know, along the way, there will be a lot of discussions, and there are ongoing discussions about how we maximise our opportunities in terms of the potential for offshore mm -hmm. uh, renewable generation, and how that supply may help benefit the island as well. So. Kroger is just one element of uh, a, a very important and big debate about the island's future energy supply. Um, but as I said, you know, if they are successful, it's unlikely that we will be seeing that gas anyway um, in terms of the, the likelihood is that it will be landed in, in the UK. And some years away yet? Potentially, yeah, some, some years away. I mean, if, where are we now, 2023, even if they get a, uh, you know, a test... Well, in it's still going to be some years before they actually get the full production underway. So, yeah, there's still still a long way to go with that. There's still some way to go with uh, with the offshore renewable energy project. We've still got to confirm um, the uh, the second interconnector, and of course, there are other uh, groups and interested parties out there who th who who think that 
that and believe that the island can do more in terms of onshore renewable energy provision as well. So it's a big debate. Uh, we've made some outline policy decisions um, for, for the future, but the important thing is, is that we do uh, ultimately end up with clean energy provision okay. for the island and, of course, secure energy provision for the island. And just to finish with the, with the electricity, is there an end in sight for coming down or is this just the beginning of the next lot of hikes or are you just having to look at it month by month or whatever to see what the international prices are doing on everything? Gas, I mean, you know. Well, how, in, how, terms how you of, in terms of uh, the Manx Utilities Authority, I mean, they've set, set their pricing um, for, for this year and um, we'll it. need to stabilise um, the business after the losses that they've incurred yeah. over the so last. So when's the next likely years. possible increase or decrease? Even? I mean, when... Well, I, th I think I'll leave that to the, to, to the board of directors. It's not really, yeah. it's not really something that I'm cited on. Um, oh, because you must have. No, no, but no. But I mean, in January, your no, no. But I mean, I, of course, we'll be look yeah. next year. One would imagine next year that there will be a, a, clearly there will be a review of uh, the current price so of, of until electricity. Next year. But um, it depends, I guess, on, on, on the price of gas and, mm -hmm. and how much that, that drops or fluctuates as to whether there's any possibility that the board may determine that there is room to cut, cut the price of um, electricity. Mm -hmm.